All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a little bit on how to use oil paints today. How many of you have done oil paints? So you know, kind of. We did last year. So you did last year. So I'm going to give you some more tips, all right, and things that maybe you didn't go over and do like a refresher for some of you because I just want to make sure that you do them right for you. And you know what? There's no right or wrong way. Um, you feel comfortable with what you use, and in the future, you probably will use different mediums. If you go on the art school, you're not going to use the ones that I show you. You'll probably make up your own mediums, all right? So first of all, we've got the turponoid. What's that for? Washing your brushes. Washing your brushes. And after you wash them in the turponoid to clean them, what should you do? Wash them with dishwasher soap. Or lava soap. Lava soap. Lava soap. Lava soap is the best, okay? You know, this is funny because um, this soap reminds me of my grandfather. Because he used to work. No, it does. Because he's no, it does. Yeah, and he used to work out in the garden, and he'd come in from tilling his garden, and he'd use this because this is the best soap in the world. It gets off everything, and he always smelled like lava soap. And that's what I remember my grandfather was when I when I used lava soap. Okay, so that really gets off everything out of your brush. So do that. Do this first, and then take the lava soap, and you'll see that you'll get a lot more pigment out of your brush. Okay. All right. When you draw your thing on your canvas, which some of you have already done, you can use pencil, and pencil's fine, but what I've found in the past is if you use a lot of pencil lead on your canvas and you put your hand down on it, you, you mush it around. Um, I, I like to use, sometimes I like to use these cheap color pencils because they have a little bit of wax in them and they don't mess up your canvas as much. So that's what I, I'll use. So you'll draw your thing on your, um, your your image on your canvas first, okay? And I'm just gonna do an apple for a, for a demo purpose, okay? Because an apple is easy, and I just have a little picture here of my apple, okay? Now, what's the purpose of an underpainting? So you know where you're going. Where are you going? To draw that. Right, but what? what that, that's kind of where I'm getting at but what is the real purpose I mean like, to know where you're going but for, like shadows? for shadows right absolutely so what it is is it's supposed to be so you know where your shadows your highlights and all that are going to go I don't do an underpainting anymore because I kind of have it in my brain I've been painting for so long I know where things are and if you do an underpainting your painting is affected by what you do what color you use for your underpainting if you use uh, brown, you're gonna have, or, or reds, or, or yellow ochre. You're gonna have a warm feeling to your painting. If you use an underpainting that's blue, you're gonna your whole painting's gonna have kind of a coolness to it. Okay, because you really have to get that paint on thick to cover over your underpainting sometimes. So I like using yellow ochre, um, and just because most of the paintings I do are very warm in their in their look. Um, you, if, if you want to do an underpainting, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's fine too. If you don't use an underpainting, um, just know that your colors are probably going to be very nice and bright and crisp. All right. But for like your piece that you're going to do, you've got kind of a warmth. It's kind of a master's looking thing. You may want to do an underpainting in yellow ochre so that it gives it a warmth to the whole thing. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. So. I'll do that first. When you do your underpainting, just use straight turpinoid, okay? Um, you do not, do not have to use the um, this this medium, the liquid, uh, because the liquid is going to be more for when you're doing your final painting. All right. Does everybody have one of these? Does anybody? You can use these that are extra in the corner if you want to. But this is where you're going to put your turpinoid. And then what I would do is just label the jar with your name on it, so that people on the future won't take it from you. All right. So this is like water for watercolor as I spill it everywhere. Okay? All right. And then you saw that we had a wide variety of brushes in the back. Um, what I want to show you is how you can use this brush right here. Um, this is a watercolor brush and I cheat with this brush. This is what I call my blush brush. So if you're doing something that's very realistic and you want good blending in between colors, this little brush is awesome. And I'm gonna show you how that works, okay? <coughs> so if I was gonna do a quick underpainting, I would just use my turpinoid, and you're gonna use it just like water with a paint, okay? The more you put in it, the thinner your paint will be, okay? Just like with watercolor. And then let's say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to block in some of the background. <coughs> this turponoid shouldn't take too long to dry once you've got it. And it's nice to use different size brushes. If you want to do it quicker, use a bigger brush, of course. 
especially for backgrounds, use big brushes. Okay. I'm going to do this very quickly since it's a demo. But you guys will get the uh, gist of it. <laughs> and really, with oil painting, it just takes getting in there and figuring it out. And those of you who have done it before, you kind of know. Was there anybody here who said they haven't done it yet? When did everybody do it last year? Which is really great for me because normally the threes don't get to even touch the oils. Mrs. Young was doing you a favor. Or, you, did you have me? You did I do oils with you yeah, last year? Yeah. Then I was doing you a favor. <laughs> How cool was that? I didn't even know I did oils with you last year. It was like year. the yeah. small canvases. We had okay. Awesome. Other canvases. Well, cool. So now I want to I want to show that there's a shadow here. Okay, so I'm going to block that in a little bit darker. That's the shadow from the apple. <laughs> Okay. And it doesn't have to be really, really dark. I mean, it just it's more of a road map for you. Okay? So you know what's going on. I'm going to try to get this side of the apple a little bit darker. I need to be time-lapsed. You know that? Wouldn't that be cool if you time-lapsed yourself? I think it would be. While I'm doing this, does anybody have any questions about oils and how to use them is anybody afraid when they use oil paints or are you all kind of in heaven when you use them and does anybody feel like they like oils better than acrylics yeah. Yeah. Kind of like and why it's easier to blend. because it's so much easier to blend mm -hmm. absolutely okay so let's just say I, I could have spent a lot more time on this and I probably should have but you can kind of start to see some form where I know that that's going to be the shadow area of the apple with the shadow cast. Okay, you would let that dry, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and start painting a little bit and um, and mixing my paints. Now, I never use straight black, and I've already said that. Okay, to you, I use uh, like an ultramarine blue, which we do have. It's a French Hunter ultramarine blue, and then I'll use a brown. Um, which I don't have out right now, but when you mix those two, you can actually make, you can control your blacks a little bit better. You can make some of them a little bit warmer or you can make them uh, uh, a little bit cooler depending on what you want for the look of your uh, painting. If you're going to work in the shadow area, you might want your darkness to be a little bit more cool because a lot of times shadows are cooler, okay, so you put a little more ultramarine blue in it, all right? Does anybody have trouble mixing colors? If you do, come ask me, because I'm really good at trying, if you, if you just can't figure out how to get a color, I'm really good at knowing what colors to put together, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is just going to put some color down real quickly, and I want to...